Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to show you guys how you can calculate the movement of your Z-axis. So what I've done here is I'm at the Creality, and I've taken some masking tape, and this particular masking tape happens to have markings on it for a ruler. And I've placed a piece across the bottom of the motor, aligning the larger mark here with the center. And then I've also taken a piece and put it on the flex coupler here for the z-axis and I put a little mark on here so I can distinguish it from the rest. You can kind of see the little dot. So what I'm going to do is I also on the front, you probably see up, up in the corner, I've got a dial indicator on the front of the CR10. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that in order to see the movement. So we're going to make one revolution uh, here actually on the uh, flex coupler and then we're going to watch what our results are on the dial indicator so let's go ahead and do that okay so we've gone ahead and zeroed the dial indicator out and what we're going to do is we're going to make one revolution on this and we're just going to simply turn this rod till we bring that mark back across and right there we go so one of the things if you're doing if you're doing this um, it may not exactly stick there, so you might have to play with it. It might be good to have somebody on the front of the machine watching the dial indicator. And what we'll see on the dial indicator is the distance that uh, our z-axis has traveled. Okay, so after making that one rotation, what we see is we basically have 7.9 millimeters on the uh, meter. And so we just simply round that up to 8 because we know that the likelihood is going to be um, you know, eight millimeters. I'll have a little bit of a chart down below in the description that kind of lists some of the more common pitches, if you will, uh, out there. So again, you'll round towards that, you know, whatever it may be. Because again, we're probably a little bit off here, uh, you know, with the, the perfect centering on both uh, the uh, uh, flex coupler and the motor. Because again, you know, with these, the width of the line could be actually that much movement. However, anyways, this is a very easy way to, again, come up with finding out what is the throw of your rod. Now, the piece here is, you might be saying, Joe, but what if I got two Z-axis? You do the same thing with both, and, and then that becomes a two-handed exercise, is, again, take a piece of masking tape like this, mark the center, mark it on the flex coupler. Uh, you know, if you want to, you can even mark it on the motor. I don't. I didn't want to mark up the motor, the flex coupler. Do it on both sides, and then turn both sides. Now, the other thing you may be saying, Joe, but um, I, I can't. I don't have a creality like this with the fancy meter setup you have. Again, you can come up with something that mounts directly to the gantry. We don't have to move this, and it's not really dependent upon any placement on the bed where this is going because it's simply a fact of uh, how much is this uh, lead screw moving when I make one revolution. That's all we're trying to figure out. So it's on the left side of the bed, right side, it really doesn't matter which way you go. Uh, the outcome is still the same. So you can then take this information and as I showed in the uh, other video about your z-axis lying to you, go back and use the Perusa calculator to actually figure out what the optimal steps are or really actually optimal layer heights probably better put for your particular 3D printer. So hopefully you found this interesting and handy. Don't forget Swag Shop's up there. Big thumbs up for this one. Subscribe button's going to be over there. Hit me up in the comments down below if you got any questions and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.